Ambassador, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you loud, loud and clear. Uh, Ambassador Shesley, first off, now we've been following obviously all the developments taking place in the Gaza Strip and the uh, ground offensive recently. How is the ground offensive going to change the dynamics taking place regarding the Israeli incursion, the displacement and uh, uh, bombing uh, of the Gazans? How, how is this ground offensive changing the game now? I don't think it's changing the game in any way. An offensive is an offensive. An attack is an attack. The atrocities that have been committed by the aerial bombardment are beyond any explanation. The ground offensive, I don't think, is going to change the situation in any way and will not uh, change the atrocities that have not been committed in any way. Uh, it is just a symbol that Israel wants to show that it can move in with its personnel into Gaza. What is happening now is a series of war crimes while the international community is watching. What Israel is calling for to deport the population of Gaza into Egypt is tantamount to the final solution of Hitler of freeing the Germany of its Jewish population. The Israelis are now trying to free the Palestinian territories of their population. This is a war crime and the atrocities that have been committed against civilians are war crimes. Uh, People are talking today about a uh, humanitarian ceasefire. Uh, this is not enough. There are war crimes that have been committed that are no less heinous than the war crimes committed by the Nazis. The Nazis were punished with the Nuremberg trials, and those who were guilty were put to trial and were punished. This is what the international community should be asking for. But to say that the uh, game is over and the shooting has stopped and let's go back to the negotiating table or to whatever, I don't think this is acceptable at all. The peace process that started with President Sadat's visit to Israel and by the peace treaty signed by Egypt and Israel, and then by Jordan and Israel, and then the uh, Arab initiative that was presented by uh, Saudi Arabia. All this has been abort aborted. I think the amount of hatred, the amount of disgust are, have overflown us all. And I don't think there is any uh, room for accepting the barbarism of Israel and its criminality any longer. Mm -hmm. Your Excellency, now, President Assisi, uh, quite recently, during his phone call with the American President Joe Biden, he reiterated uh, his absolute rejection and his firm stance regarding the displacement and deportations of Gazans into Egyptian territories. And also, the American President reiterated his support to such a stance. Now, how serious can we take this support by the American President regarding uh, the American stance against the deportation and displacements of Gazans into the Egyptian territories? Should we take it with a pinch of salt, or is this an Not official American stance? With, with a ton of salt. I think uh, Mr. Biden has lost all credibility. He is completely biased to the uh, Israeli stance. He has lied blatantly twice, once by saying that uh, Hamas has uh, decapitated babies, and then by denying that the bomb that hit the uh, hospital uh, uh, was Israeli and claimed that it was a Hamas rocket, where his media, the uh, Wall Street Journal and the New York Times, have stated that the bomb that hit the hospital 
was an M84 bomb manufactured in the United States and only capable of being carried by American uh, aircraft. The United States and its allies in NATO are blatant co-conspirators over this aggression on Arab territory. In 1956, we had a tripartite uh, aggression, uh, France, uh, Britain, and Israel on Egypt. Now we are having a multiple uh, aggression by the United States, Israel, and NATO countries over uh, Arab countries where atrocities and war crimes are, are being uh, committed. United States, Britain, and France are permanent uh, members in the Security Council, which gives them a responsibility on maintaining peace and security, where they are encouraging war crimes, they are encouraging uh, blatant disrespect to the uh, rules of war and to the Charter of the United Nations. When we have the Secretary of State of the United States attending the war cabinet of Israel, and we find that the Prime Minister of the uh, United Kingdom, who is also a permanent member in the Security Council, rushing to Israel in a theatrical move in a, a cargo plane loaded with weapons and descending from the cargo compartment where he was stationed with the uh, weapons. This, I, I don't think that I can trust any declaration coming from these countries. Mm -hmm. Ambassador Shazli, now, obviously, the Egyptian efforts uh, resulted in getting the humanitarian aid and convoys through the uh, Rafah border crossing. Obviously, they need at least 100 convoys a day, but we are slowly but surely increasing the number bit by bit, even with a lot of the obstacles taking place. But what about the UAE as well, calling for the UN Security Council? What about other efforts uh, from the international community? Everybody's calling for a humanitarian pause, a ceasefire, even if the UN Security Council does have some sort of a resolution and, uh, agreed upon by all members. How can we actually guarantee Israel abiding by a humanitarian and uh, a, a total ceasefire? This is up to the international community. The international community, unfortunately, is uh, completely uh, blind and not uh, making any effort. And the veto power in the Security Council, whether it is the Russian or the uh, Western powers, is uh, abrogating any effort to secure a ceasefire. And we are speaking about humanitarian aid. Uh, by the time this aid arrives to Gaza, there will be no humans surviving to receive it. The hospitals have no fuel to, uh, on, on which their, their instruments work. There, are, there is no water. There is no food. There is no medicine. Uh, I mean, what atrocities are we speaking about? This is tantamount, and it is even exceeds the Nazi crimes. That is why I personally, as a civilized person, insist that there be a war crime uh, tribunal against those responsible for these atrocities. And Your Excellency, how effective do you think this investigation by the International Criminal Court into war crimes and crimes against humanity can actually affect what is taking place uh, on I'm the not, ground. I'm not, I'm not speaking about the International Criminal Court. This is also uh, uh, manipulated by the big powers. I'm speaking about the international, decent, uh, civilized community that has to record all these crimes that has to document all these crimes and has to keep this uh, uh, atrocities alive in our memories. The uh, West 
has been talking about the uh, Warsaw uprising against the Nazis uh, for eight years. They have been talking about Anna Frank for eight years. Nobody is mentioning uh, Mohammed al uh, Nobody is mentioning the atrocities that not only has, have been committed in Gaza. This is, by the way, the, the third major attack on uh, Gaza. One was in uh, 2009, one was in 2014. And atrocities have been committed. Atrocities have been committed in the West Bank against civilians, against the Al-Aqsa Mosque, against Christian community in, 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 uh, in the West Bank. All this has to be recorded. And one day, they will be a day when all these people will be tried by the decent and civilized world. Mm -hmm. Mr. Ambassador, one final question now. It is the, the, the main situation, the main conflict isn't within the Gaza Strip, but there's also a lot of uh, action taking place within the West Bank, also on, uh, over the Lebanese border, the Golan Heights. So it's different fronts that they are actually uh, dealing with and in conflict over. Now, how effective do you think other parts other than the, uh, the Gaza Strip will be effective in the, the whole Palestinian-Israeli conflict? The Israelis are waiting to settle their score in Gaza and then will turn against everybody else. Uh, this is not a war of the Palestinians alone. This is a war of the civilized world that has to step firmly to stop this barbarity and this uh, hooliganism by a cancerous cell that has been planted in the Middle East and is destroying everything around it. Ambassador Mohammed Shazli, former Assistant Foreign Minister, thank you very much for joining us.